Hey everybody, today I'm Henry Satu, so I'm going to show you how to make Lebanese kibbeh. Let's get straight into it. So guys, the first thing we're going to do is just into a bowl, add in two cups of burgul. And we're just going to top this up with some warm water. Now just give it a good mix to make sure it's all well soaked. Now we're just going to set this aside and let it soak for about 20 minutes. Now just bring across one brown onion. And what we want to do is just dice this. You want to try and get it a bit thin. So now just into a pan, add about 3 tablespoons of vegetable oil on a medium heat. And we'll add our onion straight in. And basically we just want to brown these. Now add in two crushed garlic cloves and mix up to a well. Now we're going to add in 400 grams of beef mince. Now add in a pinch of salt, about a teaspoon of cumin and half a teaspoon of black pepper. So you just want to continue cooking this until all the meat has browned. Once all your meat has browned, we're going to add in two thirds of a cup of pine nuts. And we'll mix that through too. At this point, reduce your heat to a low. And we just want to cook it for about another 2 minutes, just to soften the pine nuts. So after 2 minutes, just turn your heat off, and we just want to let that rest there. Now just into another bowl, we're going to add in 400 grams of beef mix as well. Along with 1 tablespoon of paprika, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground cardamom, a quarter teaspoon of allspice, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Now with our burgu mixture, we just want to strain it. Now you may need to do this in two batches, but push down because you want to get all that extra water out. And by this point it should be feeling nice and soft. So get as much water out as you can. And then we just want to place it all with our beef mints. Now give that a good mix. You want to get it well combined. Once you have it evenly combined like that, we're going to crack in one egg. This will help it bind together better. And we'll mix that through too. If you find that it's still not sticking together, you can crack in another egg. But as you can see, it does have a bit of a gluey consistency now. Okay, so just flatten it down. And we just want to put this straight into the fridge for about 10 minutes, just to let the meat chill again. Okay guys, so now comes the fun part. So basically I've got a mixture here. I've got a bowl of warm water here. And the mixture that we cooked is right here as well. So basically what we need to do is just wet in your fingers as well just make it easy to form these. You want to grab about a half a handful of the mixture like that and just against the bowl, just roll it into a meat bowl like that. That'll just make it easy to work with. Then between your palms, you want to go for almost a cylinder shape. Don't go too thin though, just something like that. Then on one end, you just want to poke your finger through and just create a nice little hole in there. Then use your thumb and just be careful you don't break it apart like that. Now what we're going to do is fill in our cooked mixture straight in. Like so. But don't go overflowing it because then it will break apart. Then just bring it together like that and close the hole. Get some more warm water. And you want to just continue making the cylinder shape, just like that. 
Obviously, you don't have to do this cylinder shape, it's just traditional like this, so that's just up to you. But you should pretty much end up with something like that. And just set that aside. So you just want to continue to do that with all of them. So once again, when in your fingers, get your meat mixture, create a meatball, and then create a cylinder. And then poke a hole through it. Like so. And we'll add our cooked meat mixture straight in. And then close the hole. Some more water. And then continue to form it into a cylinder shape. Just like that. So guys, that's all there is to it. So just continue doing that. So guys, you should end up with something that looks similar to this. Now in total here, I've got 12. And I've just got about probably 5 tablespoons of the meat mixture left over. Which you can just use for anything else if you like. But it just depends on how big you make them. You might end up using all of them. So what we're going to do now is put these straight into the fridge. They need to chill before we fry them. And in the meantime, we'll start to preheat our deep fry to 170 degrees Celsius. Okay guys, so it's been 10 minutes now and my deep fryer is at temperature, so we're going to fry these. So what we're going to do, is just place them straight into the basket. Now if you're doing this at home, don't overcrowd your deep fryer, because these do need room to move around. So I'm just going to place 4 in this one, I'll just place 2 in this one here. And we just want to put them straight into the oil. Don't move the baskets for at least a minute. Let them seal first or else they will break apart. So it's been about 30 seconds now. Just using a large spoon. Just very carefully move them around. Just to ensure they don't stick to each other or stick to the basket. And that's all there is to it. So for now we just play the waiting game. We're looking for a total cooking time of around 3 to 4 minutes. We want a nice brown colour. Okay, so it's been about a total of 4 minutes now. And as you can see they've got a beautiful brown colour. And they're ready to go. So we can take them out. Same with that one. So guys, let them rest there for about 30 seconds before you take them out. Let that extra oil drip out. And there we have it guys. I've just served it up with some garlic yogurt sauce. And of course I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. So there we go. Perfectly cooked. So guys, it's as simple as that. It's a very, very nice appetizer. Um, you can also put them in the fridge and eat them cold as well. It's nothing wrong with that. I hope you liked that guys, please like and subscribe, if you have any comments or suggestions just leave them at the bottom and I'll see you all next time.